Hey there, fellow New Vegas lovers. If you are like me, you might have forgotten about Gene Skydiving's humble jet plane. So join me while I give this bird the attention she so deserves. This airframe, like Fallout 3's fighter jet, was ripped straight out of the annals of history and is based on the Custer CCW-5 experimental design. The CCW-5 was the third in a series of Custer Channel wing airframes designed by one Willard Ray Custer with the goal of decreased flight speed and takeoff requirements, making this craft a short takeoff and landing vehicle of sorts. The Custer features a twin engine pusher configuration propeller design with each engine situated in the center of a Custer channel. Said channel laterally constrains the airflow produced by the propeller and thus produces higher flow velocities on the wing, enhancing the aircraft's lift capabilities in comparison to other more conventional pusher wing design. Unfortunately for dear old Mr. Custer, however, the experimental craft did not live up to the lofty expectations that he, and critically, investors had for it during flight testing in 1953. And as a result, only two of the airframes were ever built, and the program was sadly canceled. This brings us to the New Vegas Custer Craft, a 29 foot long, 11 foot tall piece of Americana history. Featuring twin jet engines nestled comfortably within the Custer channels in her 20 foot wingspan. Then, continuing to use the Custer specifications as a guideline, we can hazard a guess that she features a service ceiling of at least 20,000 feet and a range of around 16,080 miles or more. Though we must take those values with a grain of salt considering the New Vegas variant ditched the propeller configuration that is kind of integral to this design. Now with a hop, skip and a jump, let's dive into the pros and cons of this obsidian design. A channel first. Knowing what I know about the Custer's airframe now, I think its inclusion in the Fallout universe is a really good call. It has that 50s vibe that Bethesda so dearly loves and is clearly also appreciated by Obsidian as well. I mean, think about it. With those wild eye-catching wings, it definitely has that wild wasteland feel to it. Other than the general aesthetic though, jinkies, I have a hard, I mean truly hard time finding much to like with the in-game design. But here's what I was able to convince myself I could call out as additional pros. The livery, that's right, I pronounced it right this time, so I hope y'all are proud of me, is simple and clean, and makes me of the mind that if she was unblemished from the ravages of nuclear-infected time, she would have looked quite stunning in the skies of pre-war America. Also worth mentioning is the gear looks functional and is complete with compartments for stowage during flight, and unlike with the actual fuselage, features doors. Finally, its clear control surfaces do in fact exist, and I always like to see that. What I didn't like so much though, was pretty much everything else. Let's get into it. Although I said the New Vegas version would clean up nice, there is no doubt to me, not one, that the reference aircraft is a much prettier airframe. The real CCW-5 had a much better looking tail design with thicker, sturdier looking horizontal stabilizers that emanate from significantly closer to the fuselage of the craft. I don't know why, but to me, this gives it much more of a sexy fighter vibe than the smaller, higher stabilizers of the model rendition. Similarly, I'm not a huge fan of the slight adjustments made to the wingtip in comparison to the historical craft. I suppose it does track with the overall Fallout design philosophy though. Honestly, in the Fallout universe, if your wings don't fold or rotate, you are in the minority, regardless of if the craft's use case really calls for such a feature. Looking at you, unnamed cargo aircraft that is coming soon to this channel, so look forward to that. But the biggest issue, at least aesthetically, that holds the design back is its wonky scale. I mean, I can barely believe the pilot can fit in this craft, let alone enough people and gear to facilitate a skydiving business. You know what I mean? Like Gene skydiving, it's not gonna work. And in addition to that, this decreased scale really just robs the craft of most of its wow factor, if we're being honest. Okay, now I've got to point out once again, this aircraft has no point of entry to the cabin. None, whatsoever, nowhere, no doors, no hatches, no nothing. Another sadly 
all too common occurrence in the Fallout universe. Looking at you, New Vegas cargo plane, and you, Fallout 4 airliner. Although in the case of Gene skydiving, perhaps that's just as well, considering the placement of said cabin door is actually supposed to be in front of the leading edge of the wing. And it's probably not the best life choice to attempt to jump out of the craft from such a position. But you know, if it was me, I wouldn't be jumping out of a perfectly good aircraft in any situation, no matter where the doors were. So what do I know about such things? Additionally, I'd be worried about the structural stability of the small struts connecting the engines to the wing. I wonder about how these would hold up, even with the propeller-based engine that the design was actually, you know, made for. Let alone with a bona fide jet engine. Seems super sketch to me. But by far, my biggest con is the fact this aircraft is supposed to be a prop job, not a jet. A fact that Obsidian was actually very well aware of as the editor ID for this craft is actually New Vegas Small Prop Plane 01. But at some point, the blades were apparently given the ax. This, as you might have guessed, renders the whole channel design completely and totally useless from a functional standpoint, and you don't love that. At least, I sure as heck don't. All right, and going back and capturing some footage for this video, I realized, boy howdy, was I ever wrong before. I have a much, much bigger con with this vehicle than simply the channel design not being relevant to a jet engine. No, the real MVP of the con team is the fact that in actuality, the new Vegas jet plane has no freaking engines. I have no idea how I missed this fact. The rear of the quote engine doesn't even have an outlet. The only thing that could possibly be used to propel this craft forward is the small, and I mean tiny, exhaust-like port found directly beneath the tail. But no way, no how am I buying that. So in light of this revelation, I can state with extreme confidence this bird is a penguin, and that is to say undeniably flightless. Yikes, I can tell you, that's the last time I write my pros and cons list based solely off my memory and outlines, cause clearly those are lacking. I deserve to be roasted in the comments for this one. And on that note, that's a wrap folks. Coming up in the near future, I'll take a shot at covering New Vegas's cargo plane as previously mentioned, and the missile carrier from Fallout 4's intro that we get to see for a grand total of six seconds. After that though, I have no idea what's next. So if you have a vehicle from this or any universe you'd like me to cover, hit me with a comment to put it on my radar. Special thanks to all of my awesome, I mean truly awesome subscribers and freshly doubled channel members. You guys are the best. Never in a million years did I think I'd have a single channel member, let alone two. Again, thank you so much. Spy Dingo, out.